Trigonometry, chapter six, inverse circular functions and trig equations. Section two, trig equations, video five, equations with multiple trig functions. Clearly, this is a departure from how I've been creating content recently. Um, for this specific type of problem, I really wanted a good surface on which to uh, do some math and explain some things. And frankly, every option on my laptop was just not working. So I'm going old school, going back to a board, marker in hand, let's do this. All right, so we're going to solve tangent of x plus square root of three equals secant of x. Now right away we've got a slight issue in terms of determining the, uh, the period in which to find our solutions because tangent has a period of pi but secant has a period of two pi. So to make sure we don't lose any solutions, we want to default to the larger period. So we're going to first solve this over the interval 0 to 2 pi, and then we're going to find the general solutions. But that's the least of our worries. Figuring out the interval over which to find our solutions is just a matter of Finding the largest interval that contains all the periods, which would be the one for secant, since it has the larger period of 2 pi. But the bigger issue that we're facing is that this equation has two different trig functions. Now, unlike the previous one, where we got it equal to 0 and factored, that's not really an option here. Because if we put everything on one side, no of the, no, none of these three terms have any common factors. So there's not going to be any factoring that will get the job done. Now we can try to transform this into having um, one trig function instead of two, but to do that we would have to change either tangent to secant or vice versa using an identity. Now, is there an identity that connects secant and tangent? Of course there is. The identity that connects them is the Pythagorean identity that says tangent squared of x plus one is equal to secant squared of x. So if I had a tangent squared in the equation or a secant squared in the equation, I can make a change and get this down to a single trig function. Problem, I don't have any squared trig functions. Solution, square both sides of the equation. Now warning, when you square both sides of an equation, you can create what are called extraneous solutions. Solutions that are not solutions to the original equation. So we're gonna square both sides, but as a consequence, we need to make sure to check solutions. This is not just because I want to do more work, but anytime you square both sides of an equation, there's the possibility of generating solutions that are not solutions to the original equation. So we're gonna square both sides of this equation carefully. We're gonna square tangent x plus square root of three, and we're going to square secant, which of course is just secant squared. Now, the square that got on the left, do not distribute the square. There is no distributive property that says you can distribute a square across a plus. Instead, we need to write it twice and foil it like we normally would when squaring a binomial. If we foil this, the first part is tangent times tangent, which is tangent squared. But the outside and the inside would be the same product. They would both be square root of 3 times tangent of x, and we would have two of them. So we would have plus two square root of three tangent of x. And of course the last part is square root of three times square root of three, which is just three. And so now we have tangent squared x plus two square root of three tangent x plus three equals secant squared x. And now that we have the squared trig functions, we can either replace secant squared with tangent squared plus one, or we can replace tangent squared with secant squared minus one. Which one do I want to do? Well, I'm stuck with this tangent in the middle that's not going to change using the Pythagorean identity. So that means I want to leave the tangent and get all tangents. So I'm going to change the secant squared to tangent squared x plus 1. Left side stays the same. Right side secant squared becomes tangent squared x plus 1. And now we've got it down to a basic quadratic trig equation. Basic because it only has the one trig function. But it gets even better. Because normally when I'm solving these, I try to get it equal to zero, but if you look closely, you both have a tangent squared x on both sides. Which means if I were to try to get everything on one side, those would cancel. So let's go ahead and subtract tangent squared x on both sides. And that would leave us with 2 square root of 3 tangent of x 
plus 3 is equal to 1. And now we've reduced it to a basic linear trig equation because it only has the single trig function tangent of x. So we just start solving. Minus 3 on both sides. We get 2 squared to 3 tangent of x equals negative 2. And then divide both sides by 2 squared to 3. That gives us tangent of x is equal to, we can cancel the 2's and get negative 1 over the square root of 3. Or if we wanted to rationalize the denominator, negative square root of 3 over 3. And now that we've got it down to here, we need to find our reference angle in quadrants. Now be careful, because normally when we're solving an equation with tangent, we're limited to 0 to pi as the one period interval. But remember, we had already decided we needed a larger interval to accommodate for the full period of secant. So we're going to do this, but we're going to do this within one complete trip around the unit circle. Let's start with the quadrants. Because we're looking for a place that tangent is negative, tangent is negative, let's start with where tangent is positive. Tangent is positive in quadrants 1 and 3, so it means we're looking for quadrants 2 and 4. And to find the reference angle, we do inverse tangent of the absolute value of this. We'll use a square root of 3 over 3. We can use either one. And tangent inverse of that guy is, let's have a break out one triangle, uh, looks like it's going to be pi over 6. So we're going to place pi over 6 as a reference angle in both quadrants 2 and 4. In quadrant 2, when we place pi over 6 as a reference angle, then our actual angle here is pi minus pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 6. And when we put the reference angle in quadrant 4, pi over 6, and then measure it from standard position, then that angle is 2 pi minus pi over 6, which is 11 pi over 6. So our possible specific solutions in one uh, period of secant are theta equals 5 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Now I just want to check to see how long this video has been going, because I know that it's going to take a while. All right, so we're going to end this video, and in the next video, we are going to check these solutions, see if they both work, and if they don't, then we'll just keep the one or the none, and then turn them into general solutions.